I'm going to show you how to solve any first year calculus problem that you want in Python. You're probably used to using Wolfram Alpha at this point to solve all the problems that you want. Well, Python is able to do that as well. And in fact, it's good to learn the skills in Python because especially if you plan on going into a career in the future that involves using symbolic mathematics, you don't want to spend hours writing stuff by hand. And computers, believe it or not, are pretty powerful devices. And you can use their power to do a lot of this symbolic and algebra stuff for you so that you don't have to worry about that. So learning to do it for all the first year mathematics stuff, as opposed to using Wolfram Alpha, will help you create a foundation for the future so that you will be able to solve more complicated problems when you need to in the future using symbolic programs. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. Hey there, Steven. I've been to your site, bro. It's kind of slow. Not the way it ought to go. Charging for Mathematica, are you trying to scrounge for cash? I think I'll opt for some pie. Do math in a flash. So the only package we'll be using today is SimPy. SimPy is a beautiful symbolic Python package and you can do a lot with it. In fact, we can do everything in first year calculus, second year calculus, and a lot of later year physics, especially if you go on to take those courses, you could either spend hours writing stuff down by hand, which you know isn't so fun, or you can use SimPy and get it done really quick. So how does SimPy work? Well, SimPy, um, you define symbolic expressions so you also need symbolic variables so i'm going to find x uh x is equal to you go smp because i imported simpy as smp so that's the package dot um symbols and i'll just go x right and then i can type in for example x squared and it prints out this expression x squared which of course is the expression that I'd be interested in. Now I can define multiple symbols uh, at once. I can say x, y is uh, simp dot symbols. That's why it would be symbols, because I can do two, and then I just put a space between them. And I can go, for example, x squared plus y. And that's my expression here, x squared plus y. And I can set that equal to something. f is equal to x squared plus y, right? And then, then I can look at f. And I can substitute things in. I can go f dot subs, and suppose I want to put in x equals four. I can say x four, so it says, Take x and put 4 in x, so now it will be y plus 16. I've substituted 4 into x. Um, these are the basics. There are also uh, functions, of course, regular functions. For example, simp.sine x is just the sine of x. It's got cos and tangent. There's uh, arc sine of x, which is uh, a sine x. Uh, arc cos, arc tangent. There's things like the secant of x, all those sort of trig functions that you're uh, probably used to. Uh, for exponentials, I would just do uh, exp x. So this is um, e to the power of x. So it's got exponentials. Um, I can also, um, for example, do logarithms. So simp.log x. Now this is log base e. If I want to use another base, such as base 10, I would go simp.log x 10. And now it would be, um, this is the log base 10 of x. Now you'll note that there's still log x, log 10. That's because log base 10 of x is equal to natural log of x over natural log of 10. As you go further and further on, you'll never write things in terms of log base 10 of x. You'll express everything as like ratios of natural logarithms like this. Uh, so it can do all the stuff like that too. Um, something maybe a little bit unusual is if I'm dealing with fractions, for example, x to the power of three halves, so like rational numbers, right? It'll convert this into a uh, real number here. If you want to keep things rational, which is a good idea for integrals, you should go uh, simp dot rational like this, and you go three comma two, and that will give three halves. And this keeps things like this. This is really useful, especially when you're doing numerical integration, and you want to make sure that things are kept as uh, rational numbers like this. So I'll be using this rational thing throughout this video. So now we're going to do everything that we've done in first year calculus in Python, of course, that's sort of omitting word problems because a, a huge difficult part of first year calculus is solving word problems using the tools that you have to apply them to problems. But what this video focuses on is the tools that you've learned, how to do everything like limits, derivatives, integrals, uh, series and sequences. That's basically all the tools that you learn in first year calculus. 
So here's a question here. Limit as x goes to pi of sine of x over 2 plus sine x, right? So how would I do this? Well, let's, let's start with the expression, right? I have simp dot sine of x uh, over 2 plus inside that simp dot sine x. And if I type this, uh, you'll see that this comes out. So I've defined my expression and I want to take a limit, right? So for that, I would go um, simp dot limit. So I put this expression in here and I need to take the limit as x goes to pi. So for that, my next two arguments are going to be x and then simp dot pi. I always want to use like sim pi dot pi for these like common mathematical constants. So it says take x and as the limit as it goes to pi. And um, I typed in something wrong. That's because I forgot a bracket here. And the limit is one. So you see how to do expressions like that. Well, here's a little bit more complicated one. Suppose you're going limit as x goes to zero from the positive side. So you're taking a one-sided limit. Well, first we define the expression. And the expression is two times uh, simp dot x of one over x divided by in the denominator simp dot x of one over x plus one. So let's check, we, we have the right expression here. And now we're gonna put it in a limit again. So simp dot limit. And we want the limit as x goes to zero, but we want it from the positive side. So then I have to make sure I specify dir is equal to positive. So this says take it from the positive side and I get two. Whereas if I want to go from the negative side, it's of course all the same code and I just swap this with a minus sign and I get zero. Uh, it can also deal with infinities, right? Infinities come up all the time in calculus and so simpy has a way to deal with this. Um, first, let's get the expression simp dot cos of x minus one and all of that is divided by x. So that's our expression. And uh, like before we put it in a limit, simp dot limit, and uh, we have x goes to, and then simp dot infinity is simp dot little o twice. So simp dot o o, because o o looks like infinity, of course. And I can take this limit and it will take it to zero. So any expression you deal with in first year calculus, you can put in these limits and it deals with it fine. Now, derivatives are probably the most useful thing when you're in a later year physics course and you have a big, big, long expression and you have to take the derivative of it and no one wants to be bothered uh, spending half an hour taking the limit of some big long beast. So there are easy ways to do this using things like SimPy. And believe me, this has saved me hours and hours of work in third and fourth year uh, level physics courses. So suppose we wanna take the derivative of this expression here, the derivative of all this squared, right? Well, it's actually very easy to do so simp dot sine of x we have one plus this in the numerator let's just get the expression first divided by one minus simp dot cos x in the denominator and we're going to square all of this so we need brackets outside and we're going to square it and so this is our expression um here it, it sort of doesn't look like it but you know this is equal to put brackets and square the whole thing now, if we want to take the derivative of this expression, it's really simple. We just go simp dot diff, um, and we take this with respect to x. Now, again, this is the sort of thing that you can do in Wolfram Alpha. It's easy, but it becomes a little bit more challenging, right? If you know, suppose you had something that looks like this. You had multiple variables, right? Y plus sine x, and one minus cos x, and then there's this other variable, of course, that's constant with respect to x. And again, this is something, maybe if you've just done first year calculus at this point, you haven't seen expressions like this before, but then it knows to ignore Y and take the derivative only with respect to X. And so you'll have this Y here and it knows to only focus on X. This is a little bit more complicated if you're just using Wolfram Alpha. But anyways, for in terms of just first year calculus, this Y is just one, and this would be something you'd see in a first year calculus course. Very easy. Um, take derivative of log base five to the power of X over two. You know, this is something maybe kind of gross to take the derivative of. Um, so we need a simp dot log. Of course we have X and it's log base five. And we raise this to the power. You note that this is a rational number. So I need to use simp dot, uh, rational. It's always good practice. Uh, X over two. Um, Oh, you can't use rationals for variables. So you can just leave it as a fraction here like this. That's totally fine. We have the natural log of five to the power of X over two. And again, I can go simp dot diff of this expression and we're differentiating with respect to X. And it will take the derivative of this, something by hand that wouldn't be as fun to do. 
Now, it can even do more abstract things like this, right? That involves the chain rule and complicated expressions. And this isn't something maybe you do a whole lot in first year calculus, but it's, it's useful, especially when you get into things like Lagrangian mechanics. I have tons of videos on that sort of stuff where you define these abstract functions and you start doing things more abstractly. And so how would you take the derivative of this in SimPy? Well, this uh, you have to prepare a little bit. So first I need to specify f and g because there's two functions. So fg is equal to simp.symbols. I have two more symbols I need to define. And I just have fg. And I need to make sure I specify that these are functions in SimPy. So I go comma, uh, cls is equal to simp.function. So now it knows that these are functions, right? And what I can do here is I can say, um, well, what do we have? We know that g is a function of x. So I write g equals g of x. And f is equal to a function of x plus g. That's what we have here. So we've built up g of x. g is a function of x. And f is a function of x plus g of x, right? Just matching the arguments there. And if I type in f, it even has f in the same form that I've written it here. So it knows it's defined it properly. Now I can differentiate f. So simp.diff f with respect to x. And it's able to differentiate this more complicated expression with respect to x. And yeah, there's this weird looking symbol, but it's just saying that it's the derivative of f with respect to something, f of something, and you're evaluating this something at x plus g of x. So this essentially is the derivative of f. So this is like, you can think of it as like df dx, evaluated at the point x plus g of x. Pretty simple. And then this thing on the outside. So derivatives, you can do it even with abstract expressions. This is really important in SimPy. This is something that in Wolfram Alpha would be really difficult to do. And it's something if you plan to go into future physics here courses, uh, you're doing Lagrangian mechanics, this sort of stuff shows up all the time. You'll see it in my videos too. Probably the biggest pain in Math 101 would be anti-derivatives. And it's difficult because it's not so obvious how to solve them. With a derivative, you kind of follow a set of rules and you go through it. Antiderivatives, you kind of know a few techniques. You can hit it with a hammer in a few ways. It'll move around, but there's no simple way to do it. This is where computer algebra is really useful. And it turns out that computer algebra like SimPy will use something, a special algorithm, where it can determine whether a function has a solution using, you know, regular functions, or if it doesn't have a solution. So it uses a really powerful computational method to solve these integrals. And some integrals, of course, don't have analytical solutions that you can write down using basic functions. So this function here, right? You see this kind of gross to solve by hand. Uh, SimPy makes that really easy. It's just the simp.integrate method. What are we integrating? We're integrating simp.cosecant of x times simp.cotangent of x, and we're integrating it with respect to x. Now note, all calculus teachers would hate this, right? No plus c. You always got to have the plus c. SimPy doesn't have the plus c. Remember, when you're integrating with SimPy, it's not going to give you that plus C. That's just by default the way it was programmed. So you got to remember that there's always that plus C there as well. It's giving you the antiderivative of a function, not necessarily the integral. So you remember that the plus C is missing. You get something, always got to write the plus C. I'm counting on you. Um, uh, something like this, another annoying trig expression. It's basically, you know, the same thing as here. I would go four times uh, secant of three times x. And then we have simp dot tangent of three times. X. I don't know why I started with trig integrals. I just, I particularly don't like them. I don't like trig functions. Um, of course I do like trig functions, but I don't like them. It's a complicated relationship between uh, math and me, but alas. So here's a function here. Here's what we're integrating. And we can integrate it and we get a beautiful looking integral here. Very nice. Of course, this is integrals that you see all the time. You know, this is annoying. You probably have to substitute, um, I think it's sine or cosine is X here. You'd split it up in two integrals. Probably take you about five minutes to solve, right? Gross, you're doing a complicated physics problem in third or fourth year. You don't wanna do this by hand, right? You wanna do it on a computer, get it done. You don't wanna sit down and do the grunt work. How do you do this? Well. The expression is um, two divided by simp dot square root uh, one minus x squared. We're just defining the integrand one divided by x to the, and I'm gonna use the simp dot rational here, uh, one comma four. 
and now it's got the expression here, exactly what's written here, and now I integrate it. Just doing the same thing. Again, very easy, right? Good to learn how to do this programming wise. And you get the antiderivative. I save myself five minutes. When you're doing um, these problems in the future, it's good to open up a Python terminal and be ready to you know, solve integrals like this because it's a lot easier. Now, I wasn't really gonna deal with word problems in this video, but it is useful to take a look at a problem that it's not so easy that you just type something in and it gives you a solution. So here's an initial value problem. dy dx is equal to 8x plus cosecant squared of x, and it gives you initial condition, and you have to solve for y of x. Uh, well, the first thing we need to do is we know that y of x is equal to the antiderivative of this plus c. And I could get that really fast, right? So um, I'm going to define a variable here. Integral equals, this is coding, right? A simp dot integrate. Uh, we have 8 times x plus simp dot cosecant of x squared with respect to x. And I can look at integral. So it's stored as a simpy symbolic function. This, this variable is this symbolic function here. So I have that, and that's the antiderivative. But of course, there's a plus c. And how do I determine what c is? Well, I determine what c is by the initial condition here. So I know that uh, y of uh, pi over 2 is equal to negative 7. So if I go integral dot substitute um, simp dot pi over 2, uh, and I need to make sure I specify the variable, very important, I get pi squared. But I want the integral to be negative 7 here. So I need to define c such that I get negative 7, right? And so c is going to be equal to this. If I set c equal to pi squared, and I make sure it's minus this, right? So if I set c is minus this, and then I look at the antiderivative, so I have my uh, antiderivative plus c. If c is equal to minus pi squared, then it will be pi squared minus pi squared is equal to zero, right? So I've canceled out that. Think about that for a sec. Make sure you really think about that. If the integral, if I sub pi over two to the integral, I get pi squared. If I sub pi over two to the integral plus c, where c is equal to minus pi squared, then I have pi squared minus pi squared equals zero, right? But I don't want zero. I want C to make it so that the initial condition is negative seven. So I also need to add a minus seven here, right? And then I go Y, which is my antiderivative or my um, integral is equal to the integral, which doesn't have the plus C plus C. So this integral is like the antiderivative that doesn't have the plus C involved. I solve for what C is given the initial condition. And then I get Y, which is of course uh, the Y that I'm solving for here. And now I have y that looks like this. So now I have my constant minus pi squared minus seven. Unfortunately, it doesn't put it at the end, not a big deal. And if I go y dot subs um, simp dot pi over two, and I make sure I uh, put that as, uh, I need, I think I need x first. And I wanna make sure that's negative seven, we'll just double check, and sure enough, it is negative seven. So we've solved this initial condition. So this is uh, y of x. Um, and just for finale, this is my y is a function of x. I want to prove to you that SimPy can do more complicated integrals as well. So let's do this really quick. Uh, 1 plus simp dot square root of x. We'll raise this all to the power of member simp dot rational. Uh, 1 third. 1 comma 3 divided by simp dot square root of x. And I think that order of operations still works. So yeah, it doesn't quite look like this, but it is the same thing. And I can do a simp dot integrate integrate with respect to x and it will give me the antiderivative of this function same thing here uh, x times one okay you know that i'm repeating myself over and over you're probably watching this like thinking oh i've seen this a hundred times if you watch it a hundred times you'll learn it a hundred times and it will stick with you so if you're thinking oh i'm just going to skip to the next part of the video stay with it because yeah, you're going to get bored. You're going to see it over and over. First of all, be impressed. I mean, look at this. This is a real beast here. We got a big integral coming up. You're going to be excited to see it. I'm going to type basically the same code, but you'll see it over and over and over again, and you'll learn it. Then you'll go code yourself and you'll be like, oh, I remember it more because I've seen it a hundred times. Also code along with this video because it will help you as well. Anyways, going on, uh, X times one minus X squared all to the power. Remember simp dot rational simp dot rational uh, one four this make sure we get the right expression and we do and 
Like always, simp.integrate uh, this expression with respect to x. Remember, it returns this. Remember, there's no plus c. You get this integral in real life, write down that plus c. Okay, here's a beast, right? I told you there's a beast. It can do beasts too. Simpy is pretty powerful. It knows how to use substitution and stuff. So how's this beast defined? Two times x minus one. And we're multiplying this entirely times simp.cos. Inside the simp.cos, we have simp.square root um, of three times two times x minus one all squared plus six. Let's just make sure this is correct. This indeed is the numerator and this is all divided by uh, what's inside the cosine. All right, we have the right uh, integrand here. Now we can integrate, simp.integrate. We integrate everything with respect to x. Now it will take a little while, right? It's not an easy expression, but SimPy will eventually learn how to do it. So it cranks away, it cranks away, and it solves the integral. Very, very cool. So you see that SimPy is capable of doing some pretty complex integrals. Now again, not all integrals can be solved. In fact, most integrals can't be solved, but SimPy is useful when you want to check if an integral is solvable using basic functions. So just keep that in mind. We've looked a lot at indefinite integrals. Now we're going to look at definite integrals. Here's a definite integral. We have two bounds, right? And it, again, it's really simple. So our expression is simp.exp of x divided by simp.square root. And we have uh, simp.exp of two times x plus nine. This is the right integrand that I have here. If I want to integrate this, simp.integrate. Okay, it looks basically the same as before. And then I would put in my arguments. Um, and I'm going to put this in a tuple, right? You see that my this is my last argument here. It's contained in these brackets. And I want to integrate x from zero to simp.log of four. And you think, oh, it says log of four, the natural log. Remember that simp.log is the natural log. This is the natural log of four. I can integrate this and it will return for me a number here. Remember, this is just the arc sine of one third plus arc sine h of four thirds. Um, so again, can solve it nicely here. Uh, this expression here, now I'm integrating from one to t. t is unknown, t could be two, t could be five, t could be 10, and I can sort of choose what to do here. Now this is an, an example where you doing it on a computer will save you lots of time. Doing this by hand requires like 10 integration by parts, right? You have to integrate by parts, by parts, by parts, eventually until you eventually break it down to x times e to the x and then eventually a constant times e to the x. Doing it by computer can get all those terms right for you right away. And if you don't know what I mean by integrate by parts, try integrating this by parts and you'll see what I mean. Um, so here I go, simp dot, oh, I have to define t because t is a new variable. So t is equal to simp dot symbols. Again, you're seeing this again, t. So now I get my new t symbol. Uh, and then I can go, um, so you'll see that even my bounds of my integration can be variables because now one of my bounds of the definite integral is a variable. So simp.integrate, I have x to the 10 times simp.x of x. I want to great uh, x goes from one to t. So look at that, one of my bounds is a variable. Pretty cool, right? And it will return this long expression. If you did this by hand, it would take a long, long time. So it's very nice to be able to do this um, by hand here. So here's your uh, definite integral for this function here. Something that certainly would be a pain to do by hand. Uh, SimPy can also do improper integrals as well. Again, dealing with infinities and stuff. Pretty cool. So here I would go, uh, my expression is uh, 16 times simp dot tan, a tan, so arc tan. I put the a arc, you know, a for arc tan of x divided by one plus x squared. That's my expression here. Then I can go simp.integrate, integrate, come on. There we go, it's all good now. Um, and we're going from x from zero, simp.oo. Remember, oo looks like infinity, so that's what we do. And I can integrate this, it takes a little while, and it will find the improper integral. Very cool. Finally, sequences and series. Usually the thing you end Math 101 with, usually the people end thinking, oh, what a horrible thing to end a course with that I don't understand anything about. I was like that too. But 
Simpy has the ability to solve sequences and series really well. Now in a first year math course, you're probably checking to see if sequences and series actually converge, right? But the nice thing about Simpy is it can actually solve a lot of these sequences and series. It can actually find you the value of what they're equal to, uh, if they converge or not. And um, there's also a way to estimate if a sequence diverges. We'll get into that in a sec. But we'll be using n for this. So I need to define uh, n is equal to symp.symbols. And I'll call it n. Now we have a symbol n that we can use. So suppose we want to evaluate this sum, right? For this how we go, uh, let's get the expression first. We have six divided by simp, uh, no, just simp four to the n. It's that expression here. That's what's inside the sum. And I can go uh, simp dot sum six divided by four to the n. And we're summing n from zero to infinity, right? And it'll, it'll have something that looks like this, right? So it hasn't actually been done yet. And a lot of times this can happen in SimPy. And it turns out you have to tell it to do it. If you want SimPy to do something, you have to tell it to do it, right? And so I say, SimPy, you got to do it. So my expression is do it here, D-O-I-T, do it, And it will actually evaluate that sum to eight. And that is what the expression converges to. Uh, something like this here as well. So we have uh, two to the power of N plus one divided by five to the n. That's what we want to sum. And again, it's the same thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this and replace that expression with this. And sure enough, we can sum this and we get an expression here. Uh, here's an interesting one, right? This is something that would probably be pretty difficult to solve by hand. Now, if you use the tests of Math 101, I think there's a... Um, I call it Math 101 because that's what I took, but like it's usually a second first year calc test. Uh, there is a way, if you note that tan inverse of n is bounded, I think you can use a comparison test to show that this sequence does converge. And what always bothered me is we showed that it would converge, but we don't know what it converges to. Simpy can ha use this, these approximation methods to actually find what it converges to. Well, how do we do this? So um, again, I'm going to copy this because I don't want to type everything out again. We'll put the expression in here. Simp dot a tan of n divided by, uh, and this is important, it's n to the 1.1, but we're going to keep this as a rational number. n to the power of um, simp dot rational. And 1.1 is just 11 over 10, right? And now, so if I don't call do it, right, it'll keep it in this summation form. And we know that it looks the same. Uh, and I need to call do it and it will actually uh, find a way. Uh, so I don't know if do it will do it here. Sometimes do it doesn't do it. And then you have to use an approximation method. Do it will try to find a symbolic way to find the answer to it, right? But sometimes you have to use a numerical method. In other words, you approximate it. You find many, 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 many terms and see what it's equal to and use the uh, convergent methods. So here, if I call do it, it doesn't actually do it. So sometimes Simpy is stubborn and doesn't listen. So the method I can do here for approximation is I just go dot n bracket and it will estimate what this is equal to. Um, there's an error here. Typically there is, uh, this can happen sometimes. And you know why there's an error? See, I was freaking out there. It's because if I put in n equals zero here, I get a um, problem. And what I meant to do is n equals one to infinity. So n equals one to infinity and it will take a little while and it will come up with an answer. Uh, these don't always go so quickly because now it actually has to plug through a bunch of terms and see what this is equal to. And it's just finished and it's given us an answer. So it's actually found an approximation for the series. You can look this up and this is indeed the answer to the series and it will not do it with the do it command because it's not able to evaluate this. So this is when it starts getting useful for evaluating these things. Okay, so we have one more expression here. And you'll note that this sequence will actually diverge if you do the test. So if you try to plug it in here and you use the dot n method, you'll actually get an answer. But this is where you need to know yourself how to use these tests to prove that a sequence diverges, right? So if I just plug this in, one plus simp dot cosine of n divided by n and I do the, and so first of all, it won't be able to do it, right? Because it's not, it doesn't have a method to do this. Now, if I try to approximate it like this, it will actually give me an incorrect answer. It should give me something like infinity or 
Maybe it's one of those sequences that, you know, goes positive, negative, positive, negative. And it will give me this answer of 300, which is wrong. It turns out this sequence, this sum diverges. There's no answer. Uh, so you have to be able to use these ratio tests and all the stuff you learn in Math 100 and 101 to um, figure this out. So it, it actually diverges. Now, if there was an n squared here, right, then this does converge. And so if I put an n squared here and I go like this, so this is my new sum. If I call dot do it, I'm not sure if it will be able to. So it's not able to do that. So I have to use this approximation thing. I know that it converges. So I know that it's probably going to give me a pretty good approximation. And if you look up the answer to this 1.969 is indeed what this sequence converges to. I think there's more decimal places, but uh, this in essence is what it converges to. Anyways, that's all the tools of math 100 and math 101. doesn't seem like a whole lot, right? It's because there isn't really a whole lot of tools and truth be told most of the stuff you could do in wolfram alpha so why is this important well as you get to multivariable calculus you have big things you're finding volumes and areas and all this stuff right or you have multiple variables you try putting that into wolfram alpha it's going to struggle you're going to take a long time typing it too if you learn how to do this first year calculus stuff and you want to go into math or engineering in the future where you're dealing with symbolic mathematics it's good to learn this and then eventually be able to apply it to more complicated situations, especially like third year physics, you're doing Lagrangian mechanics. Look at my videos of the double pendulum, for example, the resonance in the double pendulum. I use SymPy so much in that video and it's impossible to do that by hand unless you have, you know, hours and hours and hours of free time. And in SymPy, it takes seconds. They can plug things in really quick. You use like approximations and all this. So it's really good to learn this if you plan on having a career where you think you'll be dealing with math a lot. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other videos if you want to see the applications of this sort of stuff to real world problems and uh, higher level physics and math problems on my channel. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.